what I'm saying. And go, Paul, what are you saying? Okay. I've got no objection. Okay. Okay. So, the next thing, we use certain words. Saad's already said one word that we use. What word did he say that we use that? Push! Who said push? <laughs> we don't use push. The next is, is that one word that we do use is stop! How did that feel? No, how did that feel when I did that to you? Very sad. No, how did it make no genuinely when I went stop? How did that make you feel? Anxious. 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 Right. What, I'm asking, what we will do is use the word stop. Stop isn't to make you feel anxious. Stop. So get that feeling out of mind. We'll say stop. If you don't stop the first time, we'll raise the octave. But the most important thing is we're saying stop for a reason. Why do you think we're saying stop? Okay. So we're, we're stopping you so that we can do a couple of things. One is look what we're doing. Stopping you is stop. When, I, when we say stop, it means freeze, hold where you are. A lot of people will go, they'll have the scope here and they'll go stop and we go, oh, you want to stop. Do That's not the learn because when we ask you to stop, we're asking you to stop because you're about to do something. Mm -hmm. And that's your learning opportunity. And you've lost your learning opportunity by just doing things. So, so, so stop means freeze all what you're doing. Is everybody clear on that? Because that is a very important part of the day. Okay. Okay. So we're laying, we're, we're laying down some guidelines what to do. What way is Clockwise. If I put my hand in front of me, right, right, right is clockwise. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. right is clockwise. So it's going right, always clockwise. It's going right, always clockwise. <laughs> <laughs> so anti-clockwise. Left. 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 So going left is going left, always clockwise. Oh, good. So he's going left, always anti clockwise. Okay. Now, what did we just do there? I said something that was not quite correct, and you guys have finally turned around and said, hey, he's not right, we can correct him. Did I tell you off for correcting me? No. The most important thing about this course is that you can challenge what's being asked of you, said to you. Yeah? So little things like this, if you're thinking that's not exactly what he said, please challenge. Please clear. I might say one thing, he might say another, Asal may say another, Shanil may say something else. And no one will go. So, we've got a scope. Does anybody know anything about how the scope orientation is? Orientation. So we've got the scope. Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Yeah, this is the opposite of Right. Can you see the screen? There's a screen there behind me as well. So I've got the scope in this position. So what do we do? I'm going to bring the tip up. See the tip? How, where's the tip pointing? Upwards. Now if I go clockwise, what will clockwise make that tip of that scope? Right. So which way will that scope point in a moment? It's on the screen. No, it's already pointed up. Can you see the, the screen? Okay. So would it, if I go clockwise, which way will the tip point? 
Okay, so it'll turn that way. If I go anti-clockwise, which way will it go? Yeah. To you. Okay. Now, Can you please demonstrate it again? I do tip up, the scope goes up. I go clockwise, the scope goes to the right, like you guys said. I go anti-clockwise, the scope goes to the left. That's what you guys said right at the beginning. Is that always the case? Does that happen? No. The tip? Oh, it can't do anything else. So is that always the case? Why is it not always the case? That when I pull the big wheel back, the tip points up. So that it ha has to be. So the tip goes up. And then when I apply clockwise, it goes to the right. When I go anti-clockwise, it goes to the left. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So now, when I actually do tip down, so if I do tip down, yeah? So that orientation suggests that. So now if I actually have the torque of the scope here, and I'm doing tip down, watch what happens to the scope. The tip goes up. Now when I go clockwise, the tip goes to the left. And when I go anti-clockwise, the tip goes to the right. Is that a test group? Because this is very important. So you can achieve that. Yeah. You look puzzled. Yeah. 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 Listen to what Saad says. He'll explain. So everybody understood this. This is very important. You can achieve the same thing, right, with your hand. Imagine your fingers coming up here. Now we are going not to go right. What do we do? I'm going to go left. What do we do? Yes. Now my hand is like this. Now what do we do? If I do clockwise, I'm going to the left. I'm doing anti-clockwise, I'm going to the right. Okay. So Forge. depending on your yeah. position, but by and large, by and large, and I'm sure. by and large, you need this for most times. But sometimes you need this as well. You will be in a position where you want to go here. Why? Why is colonoscopy a single hand technique? Because you don't need to use the right knee, right leg. Why don't you use, why don't you need the right knee or left knee? It's because you can achieve the same thing with it's just a little not. bit of tip up and using talk. Now, you, so talk stay, this is the concept of colonoscopy. So you need to understand, ask him 10 times if you don't understand. I'm sitting here, if I feel there's something I need to do. come in and explain, I will. But if there is anything in this, how many animals? He has no, and I have no problem. The entire faculty has no problem, ask us a hundred times. But it's very important to take the concept. This is the foundation of people. So what's the importance of this concept? Tip up, I can see that it's going up clockwise, anti-clockwise. Tip down, the scope goes up. Clockwise, it goes to the left. Anti-clockwise, it goes to the right. Look at you. It's What happens is, regardless when you pull the big wheel back, the orientation will always want to take it up. Will always want to go north. How I know way which whether the tip's pointing down or whether the tip's pointing up is when one of us will go. Just apply slight clockwise. Five degrees of clockwise, you'll do that. Okay, I know now the orientation, the tip is going down. Now, the, the best way to have a manipulator on the bowel, which would be is to be able to always try to go in the upward direction. That's why we try to do this. We're always trying to. So, regardless if the tip is down, we're always still trying to point it so that the wave direction is that way. So that's the most important. So that determines that. Are you happy about that? Yes. Next, let's have a look at the simple things on the scope. What's this wheel? Smart wheel. What does that do? Right and left. What's this? When do you use it? When there's a I don't use it. 
also now very rarely we use it. We give a definitive windows upon it. So I never use it. So how about you use the, the, the lock? <coughs> Yeah. There you go. That's out, where are you? When do you use the lights? What's this wheel? This book? No. When do we use it? Never. However, someone might give you a scope like this and you go, wheels are this, yeah? Always check your locks are off. <coughs> What's this book? The red one? Yeah. How does the suction work? Uh, with the suction machine. Yeah. Uh, how does it work? I can mention that the suction uh, length is pressing it. Yeah. In here, mechanically, how does it work? We have to push and 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 Okay. That hole sits inside the seal. Oh. This sits into there. When you suck, any anything that's in the bowel comes up. And then it can get lodged in that small little hole. And that can get lodged in the hole. <coughs> if you ever at the point to get this stuck, take this out, point it down, finger over, and then it has full suction. We'll then try to clear this. The problem about clearing that then is, is that you will then suck on the mucosa. So what you do is you have a syringe of water before you do that, put it on there, full syringe of water, and pull the suction. That will pull this plunger down with the water and that will clear this. When your suction gets blocked, and it will get blocked, the reason why it gets blocked is that little hole gets stuff stuck in it. You take it out, you clean it, while they're cleaning it, you get a syringe. You push the syringe in there, you don't push the water through. You put your finger over there and it will suck that through. From here? Yeah. It's up to the and clear it That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> That's Eric. Akram. What's the importance of what I've just said to you? Uh, I knew you'd talk about the suction. No, that's Eric. That's Akram. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tricky. <laughs> so the most important thing is, is know your team. So when you, you come, you get to know people. Introduce yourself to you. We, I pride myself on wanting to know what we can, you know, how I can help them, how they can help me. And the most important thing is, is I would treat someone the way I would expect. How they treat me, I would treat them even more you know, You have to be humble. Okay? What's this? What's these? Okay, so what what do we do when we apply stiffness? What do we do? How do we apply stiffness? We find it difficult to go ahead. What do we do? Yeah, so we've, we've identified, we said, right, I'm going to apply stiffness to the scope. We've got zero, one, two, three. What do we do? To where? So you go to one, then stop and try, do you go to two, stop and try, or do you go all the way to four? So to one. To one? Gradually increase. Gradually increase. Okay. Guess. No idea. Guess. I guess. Yes. What's your best guess? So you go for two because you're playing right now the same thing. Okay. Gradually increase. You're very quiet and you don't get away. <laughs> no, no, opinion. <laughs> gradually increase. So you're gradually increase. Gradually increase. <laughs> what would you do? I would do Firstly, I mean, it's clear. What would you do? Is it different? Yeah. 
Don't say gradually increase. No, 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 I use it. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's either on or off. Yeah, so we have <coughs> three or zero. But, but how often do you use it? OK, so I would probably use stiffener uh, maybe one, I don't know, pretty rare. You don't need it. <laughs> right, can you see the scope? Where does the stiffness apply? Yeah, OK. Where do you think the stiffness applies? So when I turn this part, this part, this part Anybody else? Any, any difference? People are saying here. This bit. When you stiff in the scope. You think here? So you're thinking 70 to 40. Okay. And what is it? The whole scope. Okay. You think here. You're very quiet. So <laughs> I know where he's at. I know, yeah, I'll pick on him in a minute because he hasn't said anything. Where do you think? Oh, as well. Okay. So I, I look at the scope. Oh, this is the stiffness not on. The stiffness is not on at the moment. I'll show you the scope. The sharpest you can write on the moment. Okay. Right. Why, where do you think is the. Why do you think they devised the stiffness in the first place? Where was the problem that was causing what was looping? Where was the bowel looping? If I had to you if it was looping in the transverse, I've done something wrong. But seriously. If the, the only time that, that happens if there's a reverse after looping the sigmoid, and that's <laughs> very rare. And that would be very hard for you to get to the sigmoid and anyhow. So it was the advice to get through the sigmoid. And if it was looping in the sigmoid, where would the tip be? You think it's looping here like this in the yeah. signal? Okay. Right, so let me show you where it actually is stiff. Okay. If you notice, I don't actually pull the scope onto you and it didn't close it. There's your tip. There's your 30. Watch the gap, watch the apex. There's your 50, watch your apex. There's your 70. There's your 90. So where it's between is 14. So it's this bit that's different. Not this bit. So when you said very early on you were getting stuck in the spike stiffness and getting difficult to get back to the The worst thing you could do is having a very stiff scope trying to get through a sigmoid. Because a stiff scope going through a sigmoid, you might as well use a broom handle. Rigid sigmoidoscopy, going through the sigmoid, you're going in this way, you're doing this, you're doing that. So that's what you're doing. How much stretching are you doing on the mesentery? Mm -hmm. So when you keep the scope soft, that enables the scope to work and you take the stiffness out. So what is the stiffness between 40 and 90? That's because it, it's. The scope tip will be above, beyond, you know when you're, you're looping because the scope's not going forward and you can see the descending core or the transverse core. It's looping behind you. So there's no point in stiffening this bit because that's not what, where the loop is, the loop is back here. That's the thought behind it. So we'll come to this bit in a moment. This is where we're going to get you guys to do something in a moment. Look at the tip of the scope, just for <coughs> demonstration. This isn't anything to do with anything else, just demonstration, okay? This is so that you can see what's happening with the tip. No, that's so that you can see what's happening with the tip. So, I want to apply clockwise torque on that scope. As much as possible. Who's, who said they've done over 100? You said they've done over 100? So you're, you're saying you're the most experienced in this group? Come around. 
to I need you to show me how you can get the scope to do this. Okay? And not let go of the scope. Did I get it further? Did I rotate the scope further? Okay. Now, let's take the... What, what, where was the starting point for me? Where was the starting point for him? The starting point is... Where do you put your thumb in the first place? So when he held the scope, he held it here. When I held the scope, I put my thumb around here. See? So where the thumb is? And because I took track, I put the scope here, and then you do the thumb around. Can you please show the moment? I start with my thumb around here. So that now is uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Very uncomfortable. Who is it uncomfortable for? Me. I now want to return the scope to comfortable. I then bring it round. I've just demonstrated how to apply torque. So when you apply torque, you start uncomfortable, become comfortable. Show me. So start uncomfortable. Yes. Hold the scope. Now apply as much torque as you can. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah. And he's still stuck. Okay. Why is he still? Because he is the holder in the car. Oh, yeah. Keep no, going. Yeah. He is the holder that's put far from the vending machine. And uh, he is using the restroom moment. Okay. Now, put that back down. Stay. You're doing more. Now, the next bit, what you don't see, because I'm crafty. Yeah. 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 So, you are using the second you are No, the, I'm not uh, using the second hand. Right, let me show you. I, well, I'll show you that, but that's very easy. I can make this go walk without actually doing anything. Right, watch. Yeah. What's it doing now? Just not right. right. like everything. What you're talking, talking about, can I make this go do this? Yes. I can. Well, that's not what I've done. What I've done is, what you're all looking, what are you all looking at? What are you all watching? You're all watching this and you're watching this. What you're not watching now is this. That's like a snowshoe. That whole thing there is forcing the direction into the bed. That, that is forcing the direction into the bed. So when I pick this up, you see me doing this. You're thinking I'm doing something with this. I'm not. Start uncomfortable. Now watch what I do here. On the back. I lift it, keeping this in the straight line. What you do, is you bring it and you do this. And then when you apply, you do this. And you're forcing this against this earth. So if I want to apply clockwise torque, come on then. And apply clockwise torque, and then that will go over. Try it. Yeah, watch. Hand under for clockwise torque. Yeah. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Well done. But start uncomfortable. You were still comfortable. Now, try it. We'll come to this bit in a moment. Keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. How's that? That's better. Right, now, watch the difference. He applied this and he did this. Ergonomics. So we'll talk about ergonomics in the anatomy and physiology soon. So I've got trigger thumb. I've got trigger finger. I've got a bad back. I've got a bad neck. Generally. Right. I've been playing with these things since 1986. Right. I'm old. So if you've got a bad back, if you've got a bad neck, if you've got something wrong with your hands at the moment, you see? We, got, we were not shown how to do this correctly. We devised 
our own way. We developed this. No, we're not saying develop this technique what we show you. What we're saying is through willingness to actually share our own experiences over the years and these courses, we learn by teaching you. So when these courses came in, Saad was right at the beginning. Saad was right there. He was just there just before me. We were the same age, but he's longer in the tooth than me at this. Like one for two years. So anyway, getting back to the story. What we didn't do is look after ourselves. So ergonomics, we talk about other things in a moment. You understand what ergonomics is? Yes, yes everybody. Yes. Right. Yeah, looking after yourself. Look after yourself. Yeah, that's what it is. So yeah. he yeah. did this. Posture, hands, legs. He did this. He brought this arm yeah. up here. Can you imagine what he's going to look like in 50 yeah. years? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what I'm asking you to do is think about it. If that's the monitor, that monitor is offset. So I need to actually make sure that monitor is where I So I'd like the monitor where you are, if I was to do this, from the face of the monitor. But now the monitor's wrong, because if the patient is here and I'm going in this direction, I want, I have to stand this direction. So now my neck is wrong. So now I have to bring back the monitor to here, so I'm actually staring at the monitors. So I have, so I like to head, shoulders, fast. Initially, the direction going in, initially, so and then the monitor. Everything else that follows, it all works around this space. So, the, so add to that, there's a very nice uh, and not very expensive wall hanging, you know, uh, screen that on your device that you can have, which allows you to actually move the screen. So if you are setting up your endoscopy, I know Chanta, you, have, you don't have to worry, it's going to be done by us. So you know, you'll have a very good unit suit. Uh, so that is important. What he's trying to tell you is, and you all have done it or seen it, that you're doing colonoscopy and your screen is here. Um, now it's not just the neck, it's also the back gone, okay? The neck gone and not the last thing, your hand. Because I've lost my, this is my colonoscopy hand. This is my ERCP. So this is this is gone because because of the ERCP. But what I'm saying is you will be making everything uncomfortable if you want. If you were here, imagine suddenly everything is straight, right? And we were not taught this when we started, and our systems were bad as well. Now you have fantastic systems. You I'm should look after yourself. Is this? You're going to be doing this for the rest of your life. That was us. That was, yeah, that was that's how it started. We had one little thing and then... Yeah, and then the person came along here that attached the adapter to it and they could see and then that took some of your lights and you just take that there and go along that base and you tried to do this. That's how we were doing it. <coughs> yeah, so that's how you could do any of this Fiber optic. Fiber optic was basically we, looking... We still have it. So one of the big studies, wheat fiber tried, I don't know if you know, Aspen wheat fiber, Nottingham. So anybody aware of it? Nottingham wheat fiber trial? I don't know, it may have been involved in it, a little bit, I was involved in this. What, what that showed was, when that study came out, it was welcomed by the world. Said, what a study, it shows this. What was the average secret intubation rate? And these were the classes on campus I was involved in. So these people, uh, at the time, sequel intubation rate was X, but it was deemed that the highest sequel intubation rate, brilliant, they're doing real good work. What was the accepted sequel, average sequel intubation rate by that group of colonoscopists who were deemed absolutely wonderful? 90 percent. 90 percent. Okay. That didn't work. There you go. It's close. The highest that was there was 66%. There was one there who was a, he's a massive name, retired there, 38%. So, not me. <laughs> but that was the secret intubation rate. And they thought, oh, brilliant. Now, if somebody was scoping now and they had a secret intubation rate of 68, that was the best, that was there, and you think, no one's scoping. So what should be this? What should be the secret intubation rate? Uh, 
So what would be an acceptment uh, that, that, that you should aim for? Whatever your sickle inhibition rate now is, is obviously you failing, so that's not. But what are you aiming for? How, what, where would you reach and you say, okay, I'm, I'm not bad. 90% plus. 90% plus. 90 plus. 90 plus. Okay. So if anything going above 90%, I think we agree for. 90% plus, you would be, you know, if you go to, the, there is room for you to improve. Obviously, the more you do, it's a technical procedure. Okay, the more you do, the better your foundation is, the more you will achieve. So now you come to a stage where a failure is something that you, keeps you awake for a very long time. You don't accept it at our stage. You know, how could I not, you know, what happened? Where was it? Where did we go wrong, etc. But it's pretty rare now that you would not. But yes, we Somebody, all fail. Somebody I, will I can share with this that they said him. So, me, I've done, say, 5,000. I've failed, then he goes to him. Now, I may have failed. Uh, possibly fail for a reason, there's something not quite right. So when you get more advanced, you end up having more difficult cases. So you could say to, to me or Sam, what's your sequence intubation rate? We're not 100%. We're 98, 97, all there. But we now get the more difficult cases. And so we'll never be able But the other reason, what's the other reason why we're not 100%? Good so, no. What's the most obvious reason? Indication. 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 Lupin. Lupin. Age. Age. Obstructing cancer. <laughs> keep it. What did I say right at the beginning? Ergonomics. No, no, keep it. Simple. No one's here to trip you up. So keep it simple. Why can't we get there? Well, there's something in the way. Yes. Stool. Two All these. Diverticular. We get diverticular in the UK like yes. nothing. Yeah. You see. Fortunately, we don't see it that much. Yeah. But we, I'll tell you in the last two and a half decades that I've practiced, diverticular disease and polyps are actually rising. From the time when I came here to now, I can tell you that I see far more now then because the first three months I was just, said, where am I? So I'm not seeing diverticular disease, I'm not seeing polyps, whatever. What what I thought, I thought I was so great. Paul, one thing I wanted you to emphasize, I know you people must have seen this, this umbilicus. This system, I know, is put here, patient is here, and you're bringing this over the patient, and doing colonoscopy. Have you seen that? So what he's saying is, is that yeah, you normally have. this would be over the patient and you'd be scoping like this. Now look at what's happening to start with. You, you're, you're making life totally difficult. So this should not be acceptable. What will what will happen is your text, if they are good, they will actually tell you uh, whether they should be able. This is not an expensive thing to change. All you need is a, a literally a, a LCD monitor. Just make sure that there are two. One is one is right on the other. One should be in front of you. So this should be on the side of your patient, not this across, which I've seen sometimes. Just because you know, you do a gastro, right? Now, sir, we have to shift the patient. So can you can we do it this way? We just want to look at the rectum. Maybe yeah, okay, fine. Right, this might come out. But generally, it's best not done that. I like so, the umbilical yeah. colonoscopy. I like the umbilical and gastroscopy to be here. Just the way I scope. Okay, so, so that's something that I don't. Colonoscopy and gastro both are, for me, are on the same side. Scope may come, um, you know, um, while I'm doing it, may happen the way he's saying, but it's not conscious. So you must not do that. And I've seen that in, in some senior people. I said, don't do that. That's not good for your colonoscopy. That's not good for your posture, ergonomics, or whatever you want to call it, and the procedure itself should not be done. Now, what I'm trying to say is 
this is your patient, right? Right? This machine, when you're doing a gastroscopy, is going to be here. Right? You're, and you're doing an endoscopy like this, right? Now the same patient needed a colonoscopy. So the technician said, sir, as a karte, keep the patient here. You come on this side. The system here is there. This whole thing is coming over the patient, yes, sir. and then you're holding this, right? You're, now this, this thing is actually coming over the body, because this is here. And you're trying to do it okay. with this coming across. And it's very, uh, un you know, it's totally un because I'm not on this machine. So it's not right. You understand now? This thing should not be there when you're doing colonoscopy. Okay. So Just because you want to have this screen in front. Okay. Because what happens is you've only got one screen. Okay. Now if you bring the screen here, then it comes here. Right? And now you're doing it like this. Okay? So you say, no, 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 yeah. This is not good. Bring it here, at least it's in front of me. But in that process, now you're bringing this unlikely part like this over the vision. And you're making it difficult. So it's only one LCD. It doesn't cost too much. So you can put one here. So, system so this system should be on the side where you're scoping. Change the patients, very simple. Yes. You know, you need to have a screen, but just change the patient. So I'll just hold the scope again the way you were doing a moment ago. So what's he doing? Holding this. Uh, two, one hand uh, score is done on the What's he not doing? Uh, uh, there should be two different hands. Uh, no. Why should there be two hands? For handling, so it's for transfer we use. What he's not doing is allowing this to come into contact with this. So when you hold the scope, please be aware you don't hold it like a lot of you would do. Is grab this and pull this into this in one hand. He's holding this between there to keep a buffer between him and the little pocket. Then if he was to carry this on the scope, he could easily carry that. This will come in my hand. Right. So the, the, this can cause, if you pull that in there and catch it on here, that can cause the bending section to be ruptured. Okay. So what he's trying to tell you is these are delicate things. Yes. And generally speaking, you're going to have one. Okay. Maximum. One goes, you're left with one. Which means you can only do one colonoscopy in an hour and a half almost. Because it should take 30 minutes to 45, 30 to 40 minutes for sterilization. 30 minutes for your procedure, 20 minutes for transfer. One and a half hour, one score. With one score. Yes. You see that? Yes, I do. And who? I see, I see them done every half an hour yeah. with one score. And who are you putting <laughs> in a difficult situation? If you hold the score, who are you putting in? If I were to hold this, I'm not going to do it. Pull it into there. Who are you putting in a difficult situation? If I hold, if I held this into here, who am I putting in a difficult situation? Administrator. Administrator. I don't care about it. No, no. They're the ones who's paying for this. Technician. Why? Because he's now going to have to tell me. We're doing that wrong. You're putting him in a difficult position. You know, and then you're thinking, oh, he said it's me. I don't care. I'm doing it wrong. Well, you're putting him in a difficult position. Yes, yes, don't embarrass the people about you. Remember I said right at the minute, humility. Yeah. The fact is, when I first come, I'd say, oh, put me right. Yeah, yes, sir. So I tried. Then I realized I didn't understand what I said. So then I asked somebody else, do you understand what you know? I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> so I like it if you actually get the people on your side. Now, I did this one. Second, yeah. 
Right. Let me show you. I was going to be. Yes. Ah, no. What did I say? When you're going to deliver, you know you want to apply clockwise torque. When you're going to apply clockwise torque, and you know you want to, if I do that, I'm self limiting. This can't come off the bed. So therefore, it's self limiting. I have to bring my arm around. I have to change my shoulder. However, if I know I want to apply cloth my shoulder, if I put my hand on it, I can bring it down. If I want to apply anti clock so myself, I put it on. What he's saying is when you want to apply top, use this technology of bringing your hand under if you're doing clockwise and over if you're doing Now, the next most important thing is we've achieved what we want to do. Right? And then I'll come to it. I apply the torque. I let go of the scope, it falls back. I apply the torque. I let go of the scope, it falls back. Yeah? How do I maintain that torque? Yeah, but I have to re grip. I've got now my hand in a different position. Yes, sir. Right? I've now got compression here. I'm now going to end up having some issues with scalp nerves, carpal tunnel. So, how do I reduce? How do I re grip the scope so it doesn't do that? I never, I know it sounds really daft, but it's very rare I'll ask someone to hold something. Because they don't hold it when you're If I'm going to ask someone to hold it, it's like abdominal pressure. Abdominal pressure! So abdominal pressure, I don't like abdominal pressure. The only person I believe can apply abdominal pressure really good unless you've got a scone guy, is another endoscopist. Of your experience. I've got one tag. Huh? I've got one tag. Yeah, yeah. You can flatten the entire tummy. <laughs> you will see him in a big you know, uh, uh, Are we going to go, sorry, are we, are we going to go on the medical? We are there. Separately, or are we going to give them a chance separately to take them before? They go on, they need to be on the mannequin first, right? They need to be on the, do the mannequin before they go yeah. to do that. That's what I'm doing now is this. So that what we could do is that we can do all this, and then first person identifies to go, we do them on the mannequin. So what I was, what I was suggesting was you go ahead and finish this, and then we have uh, two people who come on the mannequin, and yeah. then what I'll do is I'll continue with the mannequin while they go on the light thing, yeah. and uh, we'll finish the mannequin, and then once they're done, they can come back. So what we're trying to tell you here is you go, understand what Paul is saying, and obviously whoever is with you is a colonoscopy. What you do not understood, you can come back and practice on the medical. Ask again on medical, and you will be able to do a lot of things. Yeah. What we're also going to say is, is when you go in there, and you, if things don't go to plan, we often can reconstruct the scenario with the mannequin yeah. So we can show those type of things. We can get you to break it down. Now, if I want to actually go clock my door, I'll do this. Yeah. Yeah. We can even do that. So the scope itself, depending on where I stand, will actually walk for you. So as you come to the scope, as you pull away from the scope. As you come to the scope, as you pull away from the scope. I don't have to apply the tool. But you never knew that happen. So now I don't have to grip the scope. So the scope starts here. I'll put the scope here to every one of you will do this as you stand up straight. Put this in a straight line. Pointing upwards. Open your shoulders. Support the scope. What? You just put your hand on that. Hand gently on that. Gently. If you then wanted to go forward, you'd hold the scope like this and then have the scope. If you wanted to come back. So the biggest thing to do is... So I like scope with the feet. So my feet are in this position. And I bring the feet around, and that scope is on 360. I don't even have to look at the scope. I step in, my hand is here. I can support it the edge of this and people fall. Take it down. 
to move from this spot. Back is staying square, shoulders are staying square, neck is staying square. Yeah? If you want to increase it more, you can bring, bring it up. If you want to be... All it is is bringing the scope from here to here. And there often in following this position is being applied? You don't have to apply to it. You don't have to force at all. This is the issue you've got when you've got loops. We'll come to loops. But I want you to understand this concept first. You can apply your torque. It's hard. You want to regrip the scope. You can't regrip it. You want to regrip the scope. You'll be sitting like this. Scope and this all with me. What? So all you have to do is bring it up and do that. Okay, um, I do that. Uh, no, <coughs> I didn't bring the elbow up. All I did was bring the scope. The hand open, I bring the hand up. What's happening? I bring the hand, the palm of the hand is coming like this to the shoulder. And I'm also making it. My practice for, I use this when I'm doing God, automatically use these two hands go together. Whenever you're moving, if you're doing an anti clock here, this hand will go in, right? And that will ease that off. If you're going clockwise, this will come here. So these two hands, right and left, one holding the scope and one holding, one holding the scope, the other holding the operator, they both move together. Simple. Now that makes the shock, for most cases, very um, easy and, and, and without any pressure on the thumb. But remember the thumb that he was talking about is coming because of this. You're doing this, and so you're obviously constant. If you're doing 50,000, whatever, you're obviously not going to have a moment. But he doesn't have a lot of moment. <laughs> 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 That's the same thing. One How can I make sure the scope goes in a straight line? And I know you know the answer because I told you the other day when I was maintaining the position. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Ah, you've done it. So, the finger. The finger will be your guide. If you don't have the finger, the scope does this. We 
But you have to think, well, what time is 30 comes back into line with the scope of the Let it go, the scope is down. Come back. Okay. Finger off. Yeah? I'm not changing anything as you go with the arm going forward. I'm just changing the disc. Also, what that does, it stiffens the scope. So I want to go forward. I want to continue to go forward. However, what's the finger? So that keeps the scope straight. So that's the reason for the finger. There, I would have said something different. I know that side says it's not scientifically proven, medicine is factually based. Well, it, is. it is. Well, there's no fact about Paul. The only fact about Paul is that he's got a big stomach and he talks with a big So, what do you, is the trolley the right height for Paul? Is the trolley too low for Paul? Is the trolley too high? Slightly right? should be low. It should be for my belly. Good man. <laughs> right. So, people may not think, but this helps. Right? Everybody should have one. Surgeon, but she also 
white wooden colonoscopy, and she has a box that she's standing in this box. But even with the trolleys in the lowest setting, she's too low for the staff that work with her. Because they have to support the head and they have to support the patient. So a, there is a compromise vein. So they bring the trolley to this height, and she stands on the box. I think it's very important to understand that you should be comfortable and straight when you're going to the hospital, or any other doctor. Right. Next thing. Everyone quickly. I've seen you doing it. Pick up the scope. Just the hill. Show me how you hold the scope again. this way, or what's the advantage to holding your scope this way? If you come with this, you have to look at the scope here and go. You try to grip around. The next thing is, is that when you try to apply it at all, it's harder to do. Because what you do is you have to lose, even I lose torque in the scope of doing this way. So if I hold the scope of the umbilical there, you'll see it goes further. That's because you take out and any torque that you're applying, it gets lost down the umbilical as well as it's down the shaft. So as you place this here, it stops it coming down the umbilical, down the shaft only. Always put the bullet on the inside of the end. It's easy then to have to be able to apply your fingers, and it's always going to be pointed there and you're not going to do it. It's here, carve it to re grip, and then you face it right here, break into this. Now, before you start, Know your, know your machine. So your machine is here, it's on, uh, there's no light at the moment, this is aperture. Now you need so to do this in every case, sorry for interrupting, this is important. We will be marking you for, uh, for all these things now. Everything that you've been taught here, like from now, how, how do you check? You must do that when you start your procedure. That should be no practice, but we obviously will be expecting you to do that in every case yourself. No bother. So first of all, you've got suction. You can hear it. You can place it. Then you can suck through it. Next thing, you've got blow. You just touch it. You press it. And then you blow. So what I tend to do 
is out low, you can hear it. Low and there's one. The next thing you look here is if the suction doesn't work, what can be the problem? The machine's on. So what can be the reason why the suction is not? Come on, I think it's on the way. So the pipe not connected, yes? Anything else? If the secretion's in it, I've not even I've picked up the scope, I've just started. If the secretion's in it, said this scope is not worthy, then shoot the person who's supposed to have cleaned it. So that ain't happening. So what else? The suction bottle. Okay, yeah, that could be. What else can be the reason? What other time these can be thrown? They're on run. They could be the reuse, so they could have a hole in them, they could have a split in them. So if you think it's this, you just put your finger there, and then press this, and it'll suck through there. You'll feel it suck back. If you just put your finger there, just gently, just gently, you can it pull down. You can feel it pull back. You can dive down in. Okay? No problem. So we've got this. Check your wheel is working. Wheel's working. Stiffness for what it's worth. What is this doing? So, some of these, they're all set to standard, and that's your picture. I don't care if you can change them to your MBI and all these type of things. So, wherever you go, ask them to change the settings if you're going to use them. And finally, when you come into things, is checking the light. So, the light comes on. Before I actually do it, put it on, the light is on. I, the reason why I'm covering it, I don't like one of the patients to see the light, two, why does it strobe? A lot of the scopes you'll see the light strobing, flickering. On this system you're not seeing it, but on a lot of the systems you see it. Yeah, why does it flick? You never asked a question. Why is it? The gentleman asked me so many questions. But I, we have hard also, we don't ask. That's all. Do you know, my dad used to say to me, he says, you ask too many questions, son. But I don't ask the questions I'm not supposed to learn. So that's what I say. So, don't know, don't know, don't know, don't know, don't care. So what it does, it strobes through the three primary colours. Those strobes, it's strobing through the three primary colours. But it's doing it so quick it looks white. And what that does then, it flickers onto there and it, what comes back, the chip on the end of the scope absorbs the amount of light that comes back and it gives you the perception of colour. And that's why it flickers. So what comes back gives you the perception of colour, not what the real colour is. So that's why it flickers. It strokes through the three primary colours and it makes all the colour that you see on there. So basically you have red, white, blue. Three primary colours, it goes straight onto it, then you come back and it shows it you have, it looks very dark and cavernous. What's that? The reason for that? Light not good Okay. So we'll touch on that again. No. Different from Tip problem? Lens is not clean. Lens is not clean. It's dark. But why is that dark pink? There. And now I get closer. So what it is, is that the more air you put in, the more cavernous you put back in, the harder the chip works to actually pick up the light that's coming back. If you look at your machine, you'll see that on some of the machines, there is one where it goes, here you go, AV and peak. So the average light that comes back, if you look at it, it comes up, 
if it does that, it comes across and you've got to keep. When your bulb is coming to the end of its life and then just in normal vision, they always set it on peak. The best and optimal thing for the bulbs is to actually have it on average because what that does, it takes out, like you're driving with your headlights on full, you can't see what's on the periphery. You only just spoke to what's there in front of you. You don't see what's on the side. Whereas average enables you to see all your the panorama. Next thing you need to do is, what is the next thing we need to do? This is a, I've already said to you, it's strobe through the three primary colours. Even this is strobe, but it's, it's so quick you don't notice it. So you're going through the three primary colours. So what must you do? An electronic chip is telling you that's a perception of what the colour is. So what must we do? MDI. White balance. White balance. Who said white balance? No one of us. I can tell. Come back. <laughs> so he said white balance. So what's the importance of white balance? If you have a race over 100 meters, and I start that race at 90 metres, and I've got Mr. Fastest in the world back there, and am I going to win? Yes. Of course I'm going to win, even looking like this, of course I'm going to win. So it must know where the starting point is. If the starting point is right back there, I then know what to expect. Yeah. I'm going to get crashed in the race. If it doesn't know what white is, how do you think it knows what red is? So it has to know what white is to know what red is. Okay? So we now know suction's working. We now know blowing's working. Before we actually move on about blowing, how does blow work? If I was pull this button out, what will happen? If I pull this button out, what will happen? Why does it happen? Why does that happen? Okay. What happens is, is that we'll just switch off the glow. That was low. We'll just switch off the switch off. If you look at the button, it's got a valve. And when that's pushed in, that one gets hit. So these sit in the seat, which that doesn't get shown. Can we cover this? The air that's being blown is escaping from this hole. If we cover it, the air is redirected through here down the air water tank. That's when we cover it. When we press it, the seals get forced down, and then that goes across where the air water is. The air now is diverted into the bottle, which causes a positive pressure pu pushing out the water back up here and then out of the air. Now, if you use the scope and you didn't know that, you need your bottle to smack it. <laughs> 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 now the, more, the other input, if it, this button sticking, a lot of people say take it out and put silicon on it. What I tend to do is you've got to put pull back, because the water that comes up will lubricate. That may be like that for a very short time, rather than messing with the machine and doing all sorts of things. Because if you notice on the technique you use, if I do this, that's just the tip. So I've tried to, if I turn to the machine, I will actually try to keep that to go exactly where I'm pointing. Yeah. Right, so we can start. We know what white is, we, we put the tip of the scope into there, and away we go.
The other thing is, is that the light has got a setting of high and low to the air. Sorry, not the light. High and low. If you have it on high, that's a lot of insufflation. Where does the air go? As soon as I put the scope in, I start to insufflate. Where does the air go? Yeah? It's only why does it stay in the city? Because it's in the sea. I go into the sea boy and it does this. Then eventually it does this. So it goes into the descending. The descending core here. What does air do? If you actually put the air in the bubbles, you've got a glass full of water in the back, and you put the air here and put it to the top. Where does the air go? So what's up with here? So your biggest enemy is to jet. Because when you go in, you sit on the air button. You're taking your time, quite rightly taking your time. But we'll say, finger off the air button. Finger off the air button. Finger off the air Finger off the air button. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we'll do. Okay? So then eventually we'll flip it. Now, keep your finger off the air button because you break this and it comes up big. That then shuts off the flow flexion and that's very hard to get around. So, you are actually causing the problem. Maybe not the difficult story, but who's causing it? Okay. Keep the scope in. Sorry, we're doing PR. What do we do before we do the PR? What else do we do before we do the PR? What do we do before we do any visual inspection? Put a glove on. What do we do before we put a glove on? Well, we put a glove on. So, I've got hello. How are you doing? It's a lady called Trudge of the Sun. I'll always put my hand here in the gel. So, I'm here. Hello. Hello. And then I'm just going to examine your bottom. Now, I know you know how to do a PR. I know you're all going to do the PR. But I'm going to go through it regardless. What is the shape of your bottom? What is the shape of your anus? Oval shape. So, and what do we do when we all do a PR? Except for me. We all come along and you go. What is the shape of your finger? No, not the length of it. Oval. So if you then have got an oval penis, which is now like this, and you've got an oval finger like this, and you do what everybody else does, which is this, you're applying the broadest bit to the narrowest bit. If you rotate the hand, put the finger to the top as you advance, and then go. So the anus, you get the hand in, and then go. You introduce that bit, rotate, then slowly rotate, then you can take more of the to get that. It's less painful. You're not just thinking about it. You've got very narrow fingers, it doesn't matter. I've got fat fingers. Pin fingers. Pin fingers? I'd say best practice is to do that. If you've got a child, obviously it's this one. The scope goes in. Look at the screen. Now, everybody, where's the little bit? So I have a six of those. Okay, so what talk should I apply? What is right talk? Okay. Everybody, is it what right talk? Yeah? Don't mumble, speak up. If I go anti clockwise, I'm going to come 270 degrees. If I go clockwise, I'm going to go 90 degrees. So what torque do you apply? Not quite? Not quite? 
this is the fold. This is the movement direction here. Right? So I want to go up here. So I know the direction I want to go is where he's coming from. That's the other ball there. Right? I come in and I want to follow it. When I pull this back, what's the scope just got? It's facing up. It's facing up. Where's the lumen? Where's the lumen <coughs> here. And what's the scope then? Shortened. Shortened. So what a lot of people do, they'll say to you, I bounce the scope, tip up, and bounce, and then you can't go anywhere. So what we'll say is, advance the scope, stop, slowly tip up, stop, advance the scope, stop, and slowly tip up, stop, advance. But what happens is, when you're doing this, because we do it all nice and steady and on, it looks smooth, like we're just pulling the big wheel back. But we're not, so we're doing it in the cat, you can move forward, stop, tip up, stop, advance, stop, tip up, stop, advance, stop, tip up. What happens is when you come to it, the scope shortens every time. The next thing is, is as a result of that, you do, you do this now with your That's it, brilliant. So there's the direction of the lumen. That's what we saw on the screen. So now we come forward, we tip up, and we miss. Right? Next, I go forward, I can see where the lumen is, that's because the lens is here and you can still see this small area there. But when I do tip up, I push the fall forward. Even though I can see that I want to go forward, I'm catching the tip of the fold. So what we've got to do is account for this bit around. My head, not my eyes. My eyes are here, my head is bigger than where my eyes are. So I have to move it further across to avoid catching the fold. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, it's not, sir. <laughs> happy? You happy?
see the phone is like screen. You were looking over the shoulder and this thing watching, so you can watch it. I mean, so I, I knew what he was doing there. You were focused on the screen, you were looking at the screen on the page. So how did it seem? You can notice them doing this all the time, so I'm always looking around. What happens on there is as a result of what happens here. I mean, you just, there are time, the majority of times when you're on this coach, you'll be able to say, you know, what happened there, what, you know, how, did you, how did you do that? And it can be constructive for you. The most important thing about the coach, you're going to get somewhere you may get into difficulty. I say to everybody on any course that I do, if I say to you, would you like me to demonstrate that in England, that, that's called to give me the scope. If you don't give me the scope, there will be consequences. So if I say to you, you have to demonstrate that, I suggest you give them the scope. Some people may say, right, you've done really well about that. Ralph says, excellent, you've done really well. And the thing is, if you should do what I would suggest, which is if I say stop, first you start here, then you're going to discuss with you, you're going to make a safety point. The safety point means you and the faculty member to Address what the progress has been so far, the number of patients, address what you do, and address any difficulties that you may be having. No one can stop you as making great progress. However, if you're making great progress and you're about to get yourself into trouble by continuing to make great progress, because a lot of people go, oh, it's fine again. Yes, it is, but you put a lot of extra scope on it. You can do it better by just pausing and applying the certain term, drawing the scope back. So we're going to, we're going to get you to work on the mannequin in a moment, but I just want to briefly touch on loops. Okay. What types of loops are there? What types of loops are there? Okay. What types of loops are there? Okay. What types? Okay. What type of loops are there? Okay. 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 Loop to loop, whatever it is, I don't care what the loop is. Remember what I told you? Yes, 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 yes. I don't, I don't care what the loop is. That's what yes. I said. I don't care what the loop is. <laughs> I don't care. It doesn't matter if it's alpha, reverse alpha, whatever it is. I don't care. That's the loop. I then go, if I, if I want to take that, if I go anti clockwise, that's difficult to take. If I go clockwise, that's the least resistance. It gets it difficult because this is close to the tank. I have to keep that reduced so it's all back. A little bit more, draw 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 back. A little bit more. What you guys are told is that. And then you suddenly start to listen to it. What I teach you is. Watch the tip as well. That's what happens with the loop. The scope stiffens. It wants to come forward. So, the two golden rules in reducing the loop. One, that's one. One, what's the golden rule? Before you start to reduce the loop. Keep the tip of the scope. So the tip of the scope can see where it wants to go, or I just showed you to reduce. As it comes back, you simply propel forward. Now the scope will go forward, but you still have to come back. If you notice, you have to it out. The scope, that is, you take it off this. Scope, step forward. Step forward there. But you still have to come back. And you have to come back a little further. And then the scope will go forward. 
If, however, I took this off from here, now I will do it. So you have to continue to draw the stroke. Okay. In step forward, I'll say two, three, three, step forward. Draw back, and then we'll step forward again. That little shimmy, once it's done that little movement, then you can go forward. But what? The only time you'll get someone saying to you, what are you doing, is when you let go of the scope. When you're the drawing the scope, on a loop. Never let go of the scope If you let go of the scope this happens, you will have problems. You have to do the same. You have to do the Guarantee. Okay, go first. Scope away. Do you have any questions? <laughs> so, how many teams have you got? What I would say is, what should you do? What did you find that you found? Sir, I'm going to say, Paul. I'm going to say, 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 Where do you see today in that line? What have you seen today which would help you in, in, in doing that, what you're having difficulty with? Which is the thing you have done now. Which you have done in the colonoscopy. What? Yeah, what have you learned today? So far. No, no, no. What specifically? What is the stock that you have What tool did I apply? I'm not going to talk about the loop one. I know. We're not talking about the loop, we're talking about you going to the same point. Anti-clock works. Anti-clock works. So, have you heard what the people are saying around you? So, these guys are here to learn with you, but they're also here to support you. So, if you don't gain the support from the faculty, you gain the support from each and every one of you. So, Pokemon. <laughs> Ergonomics is another thing that's important is because sometimes colonoscopy is, you know, it takes a little while before you finish and come out. Make sure that you wear the right size glove. The fact that the glove is of your size is not available and you wear a hard tight glove, you are making life difficult. So wear the right size stuff. You should know what your size is and you, your staff and, and wherever you're working, they should know that. You know, like for me, I will not work with eight. If it's not eight and a half, I walk. Eight, I will not. What are the okay, if I'm using the, the sterilized one, but if you're using the non-sterilized disposable one, large is good for most people. It's bigger hands like me. But you should know. If you have a small end, you should say, when you just want that. Okay? Or if you have a good relationship with your technicians and staff, they will agree. But you need to respect them and uh, speak with the preachers. Oh, no. I'm not here to trip you up. <laughs> this is a safe environment, so I can mess with you in here. I wouldn't mess with you when there was a patient on the table. I can mess with you in here. So don't worry, I wouldn't do anything like this. So what do you, what, what do you check? So what else should you be doing? Check it. Is the trolley the right height for you? Okay, so why were you willing to start? So what I'm trying to get you to do is take a little bit of control over your environment. You're going to be doing this.
So you need to feel that you have the power to say, can I have the trolley a little higher, please? Can I have the trolley a this high? Can I have what else about the trolley that's just it? His engine is tilted. So the air will come back and cause more problems. It will stick up the air and all these other things. So what, what are you going to ask? What are you going to ask? How high do you want it? You'll keep going until you say stop. Okay. What are you going to say to the patient? What is the patient though? No, I'm mannequin. I'm going to have a very So there's one word, one phrase, I hear it. Well, push, can't be pushed. So bear with me. If anybody says bear with me, bear with me. That means I'm going to hurt you. I don't care, in my eyes. That's what they get me on that. No. <laughs> <laughs> you say bear with me. I'll be going, what? <laughs> you stop where you are. Right? Your difficulty is already going to be in keep that out of the strength. That needs to be straight. Okay? You can lean forward, stand up straight. Yeah. The elbow is too far away from the body. So what can help you? Okay. Don't worry, we, we just put things there. The devil. So the elbow should be fully adapted? Although, we should do this here and then drop it. These elbow, these elbow's fine at the moment. Anticlockwise, the thing is too close to the body. That needs to be there. Start uncomfortable. Whichever direction you're coming, you're going to have to be clockwise. Start uncomfortable. You're going clockwise, start uncomfortable. Come clock, come clock. Can you feel there's less tension in the scope when you're having that position? That's the scope you're forcing that down. Yes, yeah, like this. So this should be like this? Yeah, because what happens is, you've got it like this, it causes the one you can force the scope off, but you're able to actually support the scope. Keep this in a straight line, you're able then to actually manipulate the scope. So this always falls like this, by the So in real life, what would happen is the patient would be there, and then this would be put into there. For him, the optimal position, but I can get rid of all the better. Higher than what he was. I didn't want to stand on his toe. Little higher, little higher. Great. Now that would be the optimal position for him. He had it too low, so he's, he's feeling it. So if you have him square, put the shoulders up. So then he's, he's trying to keep it. Hand is too close to the air, let's take your hand back here. Point the finger there. Turn your shoulder just like there. Hips around here. Okay. Bet you didn't think there was as much as this to it, did you? Bet you didn't think there was as much as this to you. Bet you thought there wasn't as much. You thought it was just easier just to put in and do. There's so much to think about about how to make. Yeah. If you're comfortable. They're comfortable. Make you comfortable, make them comfortable. Good. Now, if they had said is getting difficult, what we can do to do a lot of new case, we can change position. And the reason we change position, don't do anything to the scope. That then lets the air equalize around the valley. If you continue to go there, this is then 
the wicket and then draw back the stone. Whenever you do anything, the first rule is draw back the stone for centimetres. Draw back the stone for centimetres. Then go forward with the stone. See? Never do anything. If the stone gets stuck, stop, draw back. Stop, draw back. Draw back. That's it. Now you're You're dropping your shoulder. You don't need to drop it. So you'll see what we'll be watching for. We'll be watching how you actually stood. We'll be watching how you stood. Stop. Stop. What did you just catch? What were you banging against? What were you crashing into? Or you were crashing into the floor. So slow down. And just slide into the pocket you go past. Go on. Slow down. Tick down because you've got one above your head. Remember? Stop. Draw back a centimetre. Advance. Stop, draw back, and back. Stop, draw back. Keep the top on. Draw back, draw back. And then you'll back through this cover. Now go forward. Hand is too close to this. Because what happens is, hand gets too close to this. You need to have to go into the center of this thing. Now the mannequin is rather difficult, so I'm going around the mannequin. There's no seat in the space. So how can you, in real life, how would you open up the apathic lecture? How would you open up the apathic lecture? He wants to get around him. What would make it easier for him to get around him? They're saying right side. What are you saying? He's saying left side. He's saying left. They're saying right. You're saying right. Right. The reason being is if you can go to the, this side, all the bowel falls down and compresses it further. If you do this, the bowel opens up. Draw back the scope around the head. Now we're fine. Nice and steady. It's a mannequin, so it doesn't do anything. You catch the fall further. What's stopping your progress? Remember what I said about your eyes. Your eyes are missing. Uh, thinking that you've missed that fold, you've not, you've got to exaggerate the movement, more anti-clockwise. Now I'm going to sit down. See? It's sticking, it's catching on the, on the mannequin. That's great. So now you take the scope out. That's because I've made the fold is catching. So if you actually, yourself, you can do it. Put your finger on your nose. You're, you're so serious, it's unreal. Put your finger on your nose like this. Great. Watch your finger. Just look forward now. Just keep looking forward. Don't take your eyes off looking forward this direction. Right? Keep your eyes looking this down. Now raise the finger up. When the finger... No? Keep your eyes... When the finger disappears, tell me. Can you see your finger? Right. So if that's the face of the skull, See where the scope is still catching. So he has to duck his head. Keep your finger where it is. Keep your finger where it is and duck the head. No. Right, here, finger missing. Now I duck, and now I can go forward. And that's what the lens is doing. The lens, you can see where the, the lens is seeing the lumen. Seeing the fold. You're, there's the fold. You then go beneath the fold. Now I can't see the fold anymore, so I think I can go forward. I can't think back in again the fold. What I've got to do is keep going exaggerating no. and go in further. That's what you do. Come back. That's the spot. Yeah. There's a lot of silly things you can do to improve, to think about what scope does, to make you realise I never make sense now, I understand that. I, just, I said to you, keep it simple, everything is to be kept simple. 
I'm so used to saying, like, I don't think we need to go around this to this, and let's do this, and let's do that. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, all that makes sense. And, uh, Stop. So, what? Stop. <laughs> so, what can you do better? Nope. Okay, so it's good. Ah, ah. Stop. Now the lumen's point of view. What they're saying is, you're going to keep the scope like so, okay? Bring this hand here. That then takes the tension out of here. You keep the hand still. What intonation is that? this is for? What the hands are for? What Sarah is saying is this. This is the scope of the horse and the horse is the This is the house that the horse is going. What she put is. It used to do things like this. You can turn the scope. Let's talk to you. So, what, if I see you on this course doing this, you'll see up here, we'll say five, five degrees of the torque. Put the torque from 12 to 3. We will be so specific in the real. So if you want to apply this to three, turn that to three, this hand will mimic automatically. The fingers you keep in frame will mimic where this needs to be. We'll do it. If you want to apply 12 to 3 o'clock tall, the hands are here, offset. This holds this boundary stone. This holds the integration. Yes, yeah. the hand will actually mimic it too. Okay, uh, one hand is not moving, but the other hand is not moving. So, what you've done here, by doing this, you've actually lost this, this, this movement, this support is gone. If you try and move, try and walk, see, right? Now, let this go. And now, when you're talking, just move this hand along with that. Look at that, leave it, leave it. Is that 30 moves? And you're not even the best position I'm just doing. You see, without touching your talking, right? Straight. Understand? Even without touching this, you're talking. Now imagine when you're doing this, when you're doing this, you're making it easy. Similarly, when I'm doing anti clock, we're going to go to this and it becomes easy. Okay? So this is what we are trying to tell you. That these, these hands naturally should go together. So this is this is the movement. Okay? All it's showing you is this 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 is the movement, this is the movement. So you're going anti-clock, this is this hand is going away. And you're going clockwise, this hand is coming. And it actually makes this very easy. And you will not have that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go on. Yeah, go on. I was So if you're doing clockwise, yeah. what he was telling you, let me explain. What he was telling you, if you're doing clockwise, you go from, you know, yeah. if in a position, you go from here to go this way. If you're doing anti-clock, you do it other way. So you will be, all this will be, will be reinforced for the next two days. Today and the next two days, this is all you're going to be done. And this is the fundamental of the Okay. It's not about reaching Sikkim in this sport. Okay. It's about doing correct. You will reach Sikkim eventually. You want to reach Sikkim correct. You want to go without causing pain to your feet. You want to be stable. That's what the sport is about. Tell us, tell us what the checks are before you do it. So, this is just a mannequin, just to let you know. If you've ever had a scope, or you've ever seen the scope, the worst thing you can see, if you're having a gastroscope, how many of you who've done gastroscopy will stand there with a the scope like this and the patient's head here? 
showing them what the scope is like. So this is what's going to go in. Yeah. So the more, if you remember what I said to you, you don't need that, but you have the patient. Try to avoid them seeing the thing, keep it more out of the way, keep it low key, back to the patient. Yeah. This is all about the right thing, just yeah, exactly. It's a massive lot of anxiety. Now, the next big, most important thing, and I know I'm intruding what you're doing, but I need to do this. Right. If this person is a female, if this person is a female, the person who supported this person here needs to be a female. There needs to be a female with that person at all times. All right? So that that is a must. If you're going to be doing, when you're going to be doing this, I always ask the ladies to tell the ladies what's going to happen. If the person is really anxious about it, I've got no problem with one of the ladies popping the tube in. I've got no problem with that at all. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. Stop. Did you hear what he just said? Yes. How centimeters to the terminal eyelid and he says no impossible it's never been done seeing is beautiful <laughs> 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 so you're right that it's not good and for the wrong reason <laughs> what's your view what's your what length of scope is right when you reach this what should what, what, two, two questions. One is what is the utility of telling centimeters on your scope? Have you seen reports that say 100 centimeter, 70 centimeters seen difficult bends, so further could not be seen? Have you seen that report? Just the centimeters mentioned on it. Yes. What do you think about that? Relevancy of the ads, the texture we, we used to comment on, we used to write. If somebody, the centimeter, yeah, but if somebody is redoing it, we should know that what. Uh, no, but how reliable is the center? So it's practically worthless. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the only, the only, there are only two areas that are for sure. Okay. One is the rectum. And the length only matters in the rectum, that's it. And the surgical guy doesn't need to know whether it's 50 centimeters, because 50 centimeters means what? With or without loop. So rectum you must measure, and then you should write. 
that it's 15 centimeters, 10 centimeters, because it depends on what the 5 centimeters, 3 centimeters, that's important. The second landmark that you cannot miss is zero. Okay? The rest, there is no real way to find out what, where you are. And Paul um, would remember one uh, study that, was, that I remember, which had sent people and asked them, these are all very good coronavirus. They asked them where they were and actually saw where actually they were. And 70%, 30% of the time, they were wrong. And I'm talking about people who are doing, who are known for doing work. So the numbers, remember, I, if I see a report which mentions 50 centimeters seen beyond which I know the guy doesn't know how to do Five minutes. Beyond rectum means nothing. Because beyond rectum, why do you need to tell the surgeon in the left? What difference would it make? Nothing. So why would you want to tell them that we are 50 centimeters when you don't even know? You may misguide them. It may be 30 centimeters or 50 centimeters because you did something wrong. Or if, and if somebody says 100 centimeters in, then, then you know they have absolutely no idea about it. So your report should not mention centimeters seen. Your report should say examination done approximately at whatever you think is right, and that's it. Not to not complete. Now let somebody else be good. Number one. Okay, so that you must remember. Now the second question is how long your scope generally is when you're straight and you're in secret? What is the where do you think we are getting? Or where do you think we should be? Up to 70 centimeters. Yeah. So about anywhere between 60 to 70 centimeters. Okay. Um, but by and large, 70 centimeters is when your scope is straight. Okay. So you can say that you know you've seen cecum. The part next to it is ascending colon fine. The part next to rectum is sigmoid, and then after that you are sort of lost, except transverse colon. So that you'll be able to pick it up in majority, but you can't be. This is not something that you can rely on or, or be right about. So this is important. So what happens is in real life you do a procedure and you say that you couldn't go beyond because you saw tumor, you do a CT scan. CT scan confirms where the tumor is, and that's done. Right? So you can say left side, instead of probably transverse colon or right side. I think that's what I would write. I'd say this is, and the tumor is in the left colon. Oh. Okay. And, uh, any, uh, anything else you want to add? The only thing that we have for the very short scope in this journal area is that when you draw the scope back, the scope and the weight of the scope will fall off from the bow on the so you have to be prepared for that. And the way to prepare for that is what? We showed you. What we're going to do to keep the scope stable so that it can fall back? No, no, these guys saw it. Come as observers. They didn't know I'd pick on them today. Okay. Did I not say you've got to keep your fingers straight? That will help them stop it. Did any of the power fall off? And how quickly did you draw that? Six minutes. Six minutes. Six yeah, minutes. Six minutes. So we, we took our time drawing back the scope, but we were still able to draw back in. So what you've got to do is bear in mind that you can get around, you can get the system, and you can get the terminal item. It's irrespective of the length of scope, you have to pay attention to the time when you come back. What I tend to do is look up to take notes at the time and then just say something to someone who's with us. What's the minimum time of the scope withdrawal? That's acceptable. Six to six. six. <coughs> but you know, remember six minutes is when your bowel prep is absolutely clean and that we don't find anything. Okay. If your bowel prep is not, is, is not very good, then six minutes means nothing. Okay. You need to wash that area if you can. Bowel prep is really good and you have to read. 
So it's nine minutes, minutes in the UK. Yeah. It's going to be nine minutes. Yeah, I think six minutes is too short. For when you are looking for small regions, six minutes is too short for most people. Someone like me, I think six minutes is too short. I'm likely to miss a small one. So you need to spend that much time coming up. Obviously, somebody young, you wanted to just evaluate the items in the but that's a different but for, you know, mind and colonoscopy, especially screening colonoscopy, Paul will uh, tell you a little bit more. There are people who are involved in screening colonoscopy are uh, uh, selected in some ways in the United States. Once you've done this course in the UK, you then get signed off, you then get a list assigned, you have got a supervisor, you're not directly in the room, you then make your way, and if you're seeking patients that are both 80, sense of climbing that will leave you alone and not come as well. Once you go above 92%, then they look at you with regards to how you're eligible to work as a bowel cancer screening program, as a bowel cancer screener. The, it's a very select group, but it's only 350 in the UK, um, which I was part of in the first way, so it's not, not an issue. People lost friends over it because people so like, I come to start to be assessed. So my brother, he knows what I think of him, never come like that. I come to him to be assessed, and then here's me coming in. I then scope and he says, sorry, I'm not going to my brother. And that happened in the UK. People a lot, lost a lot of good friends because all of a sudden this small group of people suddenly turned out and said, you're not good. Um, it did happen. And so people then got very upset about this and then started to not the bowel cancer screening program. But the bowel cancer screening program become very elitist and it's, it has got its drawbacks, it has got its benefits. And I do think what happened also is that you've got a normal list which has six to eight patients on and you've got a bowel cancer screening list that has four patients on. What the loose focus on is that bowel cancer screening list will probably have points, whereas a normal list may not. A normal with patients has a large quality of in the back, whereas on the back of the screening, we do expect it to take it off. So there, there's a difference. Thank you. What are you going to do?